embarrassing embarrassing i have fixed this 3 ohm like twice already today and i refuse to fix that 3 ohm another time but nevertheless hi my salty pecans happy house planet cocktail friday my gosh my voice is horrible. so embarrassing so for tonight's house plant and cocktail I will not be doing any like physical plant chores. It's going to be more advice. And the cocktail of choice for tonight, I just taking a little easy way out and I'm going to be doing a whiskey sour for our house plant and cocktail tonight. So I did vary up the ingredients because I'm cleaning house, so there's some things that I thought I had, but I don't have that I, you know, just got rid of. And I just don't, anyway, so I have what I have, and we're going to use the ingredients. They're pretty much the same exact things we need, but I have a little bit of, like, tweaking that I did to some of the items that I'm going to be using for our whiskey sour tonight. And I'm honestly just going to go straight into the whiskey sour. So what I did actually do... Hi, Miss Lady June. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I actually did pick up one of these cocktail shakers. Okay, so it comes with just like the cap, it comes with the lid that has like the strain. It's plastic and it has some measurements here. So this is going to be used with like cold beverages and not hot beverages okay and i also finally did end up getting just like a proper measuring like you know a measuring container <laughs> vessel i have my whiskey glass that i'm using we need a lemon but i have a lime i could actually just go pop a lemon but i'm gonna use the lime because i want it to be sour i actually want it to be sour i don't want it to taste like a juice, which for me, the lemon would give me more of a juicy sort of flavor versus the lime would give me more of a sour flavor. You need bourbon or whiskey. I'm just trying to finish this whiskey that I have. This is the Grant's blended scotch whiskey. I just want to like toss this out so I can have this space for something that's full. So I just want to get through the Grant's bourbon whiskey and you just need ice so as per usual i'm going to be using my plant leaf motif ice cubes and that's it so let's go ahead and make our cocktail tonight so it says in order to do a whiskey sour you will need about two ounces of your whiskey three-fourth ounce of lemon lime juice three-fourth ounce of simple syrup and if you want to garnish your beverage which i'm not just going to be garnishing you can use like an orange wheel or you can use the maraschino cherries. I'm not garnishing with either of those, but you know, you can use that. So for my simple syrup, I'm not using just regular simple syrup. I actually made my own lavender simple syrup. So it's in here. I have the lavender simple syrup that I'm going to be using for our drink tonight. And let's get into it okay i just want to double check one more measurement okay all right so how much fluid is 100 cc's 100 cc's is 3.4 ounces so this is 40 cc's. How much is 40 cc's? So I know what, <laughs> I don't know. 40 cc's is about one ounce. So one of this is about one ounce. Let me see. One ounce. One ounce is about 30 cc's. So 30 cc's is an ounce and it calls for two ounces of 
bourbon, three fourth ounce of lemon juice, three fourth ounce of simple syrup, and half an ounce of orange. So 20 cc's is what? I'm just trying to get like the correct proper measurements for y'all. So it's a little over a half an ounce. So let's let's do this. Hi, Tebra. Welcome. How are you? Happy Friday. So my week actually was not all that bad. This week was very calm, which I'm so grateful for because last week was not calm, not one bit. Last week was insane. Let me get this out of the way so it's not in my video. Last week was insane. And I'm so happy that it's over with. I was watering some plants, so I have like plants scattered all over. You actually look down here. Okay. This. But I guess for video purposes, you might look a little bit better over here. Cute. Er. You can just drape you over here like so. Boom. It be that's it. All right. So the first thing first, I'm going to put some ice inside of my shaker. That would have been soft. And then I'm going to just put the rest of the ice in my cup. So there's a lot of liquid. So only 30. Another 30. Thanks, Miss Lady June. <laughs> that definitely was a good catch. I don't know what's happening. I completely forgot to bring my my cutter, my my squeeze for the lemon. So it's at three fourths ounce. If an ounce is thirty, so three fourths ounce. The measurement is so precise, y'all. So precise. All right. Ooh, that almost the juice literally almost splashed in my eye. This is about three fourths of an ounce. It requires another three fourth ounce of simple syrup. And I'm using a lavender simple syrup that I made. Okay. So this is going to be just, the flavor in this is it's going to be so different. And that's pretty much all you need. So I'm going to just... Make sure it's on tight. And
and my salty pecans. Here we have a whiskey sour a la house plant. Cheers. Click. Let's give it a tasty taste. Ooh, that's good. That's bomb. That's bomb. That's really good. That's really good. Cheers, Deb. Woo. So this week has been pretty nice for me. It's been a good week overall. Work has been work as per usual. You know, it's not, I'm not at a career. You know what I mean? I'm not at somewhere where I would say like it's my passion, it's my dream. Right now I'm here, I'm doing what I got to do to stay afloat and I'm continuing to just work to get to where I want to be. I also had a doctor's appointment so my work day actually ended early today. So I went to deal with that, pet sitting for my best friend again. So I went to feed her babies and now I'm home. I dropped off some things to the fam that they asked me to like get for them. It's been a good day. It's been just a chill day. I think tomorrow I might not go. I think tomorrow I might do laundry or I might do it sometime like during the week, during like my lunch break or something. I will, you know, like just head downstairs because my laundry is in my building, which is I'm super fortunate for that because living in the city, there are things called laundromats. And I think other states have laundromats because I've seen them in like New Hampshire when I visit my cousin in the past. But like, you know, outside laundry services. So I have them in my building so I don't have to I honestly just like worry about leaving. But mm. That's bomb. That's so good. Oh, that is so good. So my salty pecans, the seasons are changing. I I can't believe summer is basically over. When is the last day of summer? 2023. Let me Google that. The last day of summer is tomorrow. So tomorrow is September 23rd. And it says summer ends September 23rd. So essentially it's the last day of summer today. So if you did not get a chance to, I'm sorry you missed your last chance to really go out your last day of summer to enjoy the weather. It wasn't all that bad here in New York. <sighs> but definitely the seasons have changed. And it hit me today. It I haven't like noticed it this past week because I've just been inside. I'm like work, home, work, home, work, home. No social life at all. So today, guess what I did during my lunch break because I was working from home today. I decided to go for a walk around the neighborhood just to get some fresh air. And I took my cat with me. <laughs> I took my cat with me to like on my walk. So I had like a zip up hoodie. I took Jinx, the black and white baby. I took, I had my zip up hoodie and like, I literally just like stuffed her like a little baby kangaroo. And she was like in my hoodie with her head like out as I'm walking. And sometimes if maybe there's like a noise that she's not that fond of, or she might hear like, mm, like maybe people mowing lawns or stuff. And she doesn't really like that noise. She'll like tuck her head and like just, she was literally like this around me, just like that. And then she would like pop her head up and look. And if, you know, she sees something she didn't like, she would like pop her head back and hide like under my boob. <laughs> it was so cute. But I took her out for maybe like a 15, 20 minute walk. Um, I don't know if she enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it. The weather was so beautiful. It was cooler. It was colder. I did have a hoodie on with this top. So... I wasn't cold, but again, temperature completely changed. And I, to the point that I was trying to make, I noticed today that the leaves have like fallen and there's this man with a leaf blower in my neighborhood 
just blowing leaves like into the street from the sidewalk. And I'm like, it hit me. Like summer is really over. And I'm so sad about it. I'm so bummed out. I'm a summer baby. Honestly, I will take the summer heat any day over whatever winter wants to bring. Like any day I will take the summer heat over winter. I, I like fall. Fall. Fall is good. We can do fall. Okay. We love a good fall. Swather weather. Swather weather. Like I love the swather weather. But I'm not a big fan of cold, heavy cold winter weather. I'm not a fan of like allergy season weather either. Give me summer and give me fall and edit at that. I love New York. I love living on the East Coast, but California weather is my type of weather. Deb says, girl, I'll be at Coast all October. House slash pet sitting for a friend. Can't wait. Wake and sleep to the sound of Pacific Ocean. Nice. For three weeks? I'm Jelly Beans, Deb. I am so Jelly Beans. That sounds amazing. How relaxing is that? So, like, when you're out there, are you, you going to be handling your own thing? Like, what you, what you about to do? Three weeks? What are you going to do for three weeks? Oh my gosh. Oops, don't say that. You don't say that. What? The sound of the Pacific Ocean? I don't know no poor person who got no access to no sound of no Pacific Ocean. Unless you're literally like living on the beach itself or like under the boardwalk. <laughs> Deb, you're good. Don't worry about that. But for me, like, I can't believe, again, the seasons are changing so fast. So a couple things that I have already started to do for my house plant. okay? So you all remember, if you don't, about a month ago, someone in the building management, like, like essentially like ruin my house plant. So I don't even have to worry about transitioning my outdoor plants indoors because someone like forced me to do it. So with those house plants, because I did bring them from outside, inside, for me, I'm very conscious about pests, bringing outdoor pests into my home. So I did give those plants a good systemic pesticide treatment. I isolated the house plants from outdoors, so my euphorbias, my cacti, any other outdoorsy plants, I, like I said, gave them a systemic treatment. I isolated them for a couple of weeks, gave them a systemic treatment, so now, like, I'm bringing them back into another room. I'm not bringing them into this room. I just have my cacti living in my bedroom with my ficus, so my ficus, all two of my actually do I have a third one in there all three of my ficus live in my bedroom and all of my cacti my euphorbias more succulency plants they all live in my bedroom okay so that's the first thing that I did in regards to treating and caring and preparing my plants for the winter fall weather the second thing that I am doing less is actually in regards to my watering. I decided to not water as frequently because one, it's not as hot. The plant pots are not drying as much. So plants that, for example, my Hoyas. So I have a Hoya window. Usually, typically, I water my Hoyas every day during the summer, if not every other day. And you're like, Pam, what the hell? Every day, yes. I what I found for my plants with the substrate mix that I have for them, with the positioning of like my apartment, with like the temperature of like itself, with like how much sunlight the plants get, how bright the sunlight they get, all of that factors into the 
frequency of watering that I provide my plants. So when it comes to your house plants, obviously pay attention to your environment, pay attention to the substrate mix that you have, because maybe you might have something that's more, you know, hydrophilic, you know, something that prefers water, okay? Like something that's more mossy, peaty, cocoa-y, something that loves to retain moisture versus something that is more draining, that has more orchid bark, more perlite, you know? So depending on what mix you have for your plants, what is this? I have this like mark here. I have an allergic reaction. So that is the other thing that I, you know, that's the reasoning behind why and how I take care of certain plants. So the frequency of watering is less. And another thing that I've been doing to maintain and care for these plants actually is <clears throat> I'm trying to get everyone, of course, on a similar schedule, but I'm also deciding to give them one last good fertilizer, okay? Give my plants one last good, like, strong fertilization treatment, and also in the same breath, with that same fertilization treatment, I'm also giving all of my plants a systemic treatment, and I'm doing that out of paranoia and less out of necessity. And when I say paranoia, paranoia in regards to I've had thrips in my collection before. And although for me, I do believe I got rid of the thrips, a lot of the times when it comes to these house plant pests, the reason why they exist, right? The reason why we can't completely eradicate them is their eggs a lot of the time go through dormancy periods, okay? And dormancy periods is kind of like, think of like a bear, okay? Bears, they hibernate, right? So during like the winter season, you know, the fall seasons, whatever, bears, they sleep in order to preserve themselves and because of the scarcity of food. So during the winter months, you're like, oh my God, all the bears are gone. There are no more bears. No, baby. The bears are sleeping. They're hibernating. They're dormant right now. But when, you know, the birds start tweakle, 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 you know, the birds start chirping and <laughs> you know what I mean? So the same thing happened with houseplant pests. So if you actually do some research for some plant pests, you'll see that a lot of them, they do go dormant during the summer. And so... During the summer, you're like, oh, my plants are good. You know, I got rid of all the pests, whatever, whatever. But the eggs are actually just chilling in your soil, ready to hatch in the fall, in the winter, because that's around their season, okay? So because of that, now that we're coming into the cooler season, in my mind, I'm expecting for thrips to actually start like, uh -huh, uh -huh, getting like, hey, 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 you know? So giving all of my plants like a thrips treatment, I've already started to do that. Gave every, you know, giving everybody a thrips treatment like right now. Oh, this heavy bucket is full of a good systemic uh, water. And I've like just been slowly letting certain plants like soak. So this one has like just been soaking inside of here. There's water in here. You just see me take this burly marks. It was soaking. And the burly marks itself is that in soil, this plant is a moss. It lives in moss completely. I had it soaking in the, the, the treatment that I made. So, and for example, even the plant that Felix sent to me because it's in the collection with everybody else. I do have it here, right? But I also have it like in here, just like soaking up some systemic pesticide treatment because if it's going to be living here, I want everybody to be on the same page. I want everybody to be on the same, you know, like playing field that I can't pick and choose and blame this and that and the third because everyone has been dealt with, okay? So that is the next thing you're like, yeah, I'm like, 
Why don't I? No. I like it in here with this on top of it. <laughs> so that's the next thing that I'm doing. And if you would have seen a few videos ago, what I've been also doing is in regards to new growth and in regards to old dying foliage, I'm making sure to stay on top of removing the dead foliage because a lot of the times they're like microorganisms that do feed off, they do feed off of the like the decaying, rotting foliage. So I want to make sure that my plants have the most support that it can. And I also want to make sure that my plants are concentrating any power, any energy into healthy leaves versus trying to like keep alive a leaf that, you know, its time is long gone for, you know? So I'm, I'm still keeping this little egg basket of just like dried and dyed leaves and you know I just I'm trying to like fill this to the top I don't know for what because I'm gonna throw it away anyways but I'm just gonna like keep stacking it all in here so when I do like my little compost pile I can just like throw all of this in my compost pile and bring it to the compost bin for me to compost the foliage so that's another thing I've actually been starting to do is composting so let me let me read the comments but there's a lot of cheetah chatter hi cj welcome 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 how are you hi felix Yep. CJ says, I neem oil all my plants before bringing them back in. Y'all, speaking of CJ, somebody got a nice little collection. <laughs> somebody got a nice ass collection. How are you? <laughs> Deb says the weather by her has been nice too, but there's rain coming tonight. Yeah, there's also rain coming here in New York too for like the rest, for the next couple of days, which is like, ugh, ugh. gross. Miss Lady June says rain from hurricane tonight in Virginia. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I guess it's really hitting the East Coast. Um, tonight, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, storm, Ophelia. <laughs> oh my goodness, Psh, Felix. I can't even, my mind, I can't even fathom what Felix's collection is like. I feel like Felix has every plant that I could think of. Miss Lady June says Felix with a nice plant collection. <laughs> oh my goodness. But this week has been just like really calm. Really just getting what I have to do. I'm planning some good content for the month of October. Some good content as a context some good content for halloween i already have down the drinks that i'm going to be making let me check my calendar the last day of okay so next saturday is the last day of september so next friday will be the 29th which is the last day of september the okay sorry the last friday of september is next friday which is the 29th um but so i have my halloween cocktails already like pre-planned believe it or not i've purchased i've purchased like some ingredients months ago that i needed just because i'm like 
freaking Virgo paranoid. Okay. Felix says, I don't have a large plant collection. It doesn't have to be large, but you know, a sexy collection. You definitely should make a video on IG for us. Yes, Miss Lady June said, small can be gorgeous. Amen to that. Amen to that. It ain't the size of the hackers. <laughs> or the collection. <laughs> it's like someone saying, I have a... Let, all right, let's bring our mind back. Because I'm not too, like up to date with plants now, 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 and, you know, like, plants, like, which plant costs more now than it used to, like, back in the day. So, for example, let's say, let's go back in the day to 2018, when it was, uh, God, what is that plant? It, the Elsemini, okay? The Elsemini, um... Like back in the day, so imagine you were like, oh, I don't have a large plant con collection. I have a Elsemini, I have a Pink Princess, I have a Tycon, and I have, let's say, a Varicosa, okay? You have four plants, but that's a dope collection, all right? Versus someone who's just like, yeah, I have 100 plants, but it's all like common house plants. I have a Golden Pothos, I have a Green Pothos. I have a philodendron, scadence, and then I have a, um, I have a couple of Haworthias. I don't know, you know what I mean? So just because your collection is large doesn't mean, you know, it's not popping. Because you sent me some popping plants. Like, CJ said it would be nice if we can share pictures of our collection. I agree. Deb agrees. It would be dope, like, if I made, like, a Discord. You know, I feel like the proper way to probably do that is, to, like, if I had, like, a Discord where, you know, we can all chip chat and, like, actually share things with, you, with each other. But I am in no shape or size to create a Discord. I My channel is way too small for me to take on the Discord. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's, it will be like a, a group chat. <laughs> Technically, it will be like a group chat. It's like, like 10 of us in there chit-chatting. Oh my goodness. Let me see what y'all up to in the chat. Ooh, Miss Lady June says, I have 20 plants in my living room and 10 different snake plants in my bedroom. What? Oh, my gosh. Sorry, y'all. I'm just reading a message. CJ says, large collections take too much time. I dropped from 300 to 100 now. Yep, I agree 100%. Felix says, I see other individuals with large collections. Seems like a full-time job. It literally is a full-time job. I had, at one point, like over 200 houseplants. And I, too, I'm at like 100-something, right? Houseplants. And I remember years ago, I made like a video saying, like, essentially, like, I'm going through seasonal depression and having so many house plants is definitely was not aiding in my mental health. Although the plants do aid with my mental health, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel productive. I love my house plants, but it got to a point where I just had so much that it was so overwhelming that I was losing house plants a lot. And not because of them, it was more because of me because I would look at a plant and I'm like, I literally see you begging me for watering, but I physically cannot water you. Not because my arms aren't working, not because my legs aren't working, not because I don't have water, just because here was not where it needed to be. And 
it was just overwhelming, like just to see all the plants that I had. So via natural selection, okay, the plants that could not be held up, you know, the plants that could not survive in my collection, they did me a favor and they did themselves a favor, you know, and like poof, gone away. I don't know. This is literally itching me so much right now. And I literally just came from the dermatologist earlier. And now, like, this is, like, bothering me. Let's see. Let's do that. All right. So... Yeah, so now I have like a hundred something house plants, and I'm really happy with my collection. I love it. You know, every now and then I probably bring in like one or two plants, and you know, when I'm lucky enough, I get gifted plants that I'm so grateful and so gracious for. So I do add those, and because I don't feel like I'm overwhelming myself with plants, I can something can what I I can take care of it. But before. I would, I used to like create monthly, but it's like when I think back to like how crazy I was like as a plant parent, like I would really was a crazy plant parent. I used to create budgets for myself every single month. Who the hell creates a freaking plant budget that they never stuck to? I would be like, oh, my plant budget is $300 for this month. My plant budget is, I don't know, $100. Always went over it. Always went over it. Obsessed. I was crazy. Looking back, I was crazy. I don't know, that whole pandemic, that pre-COVID, that COVID just like burst of crazy plant parentness really got to me. So I'm so happy I am out of that. I had like yeah, I'm so happy I am out of that phase because one, I'm saving a bit more money. And two, coming into an understanding who I am as a plant parent, seeing what type of like plant genus that I really like fuck with, that I really want in my collection, that I really enjoy, that actually bring joy to my bring, bring joy to me, bring joy to my collection. So over the years, you know, it's it's really helped. Let me go through some of these comments. Deb says, yep, I'm disabled, so have the time. I don't count, but have about 200 to 300. I'm gifting and selling before I head out of town. Ow! Miss Lady June says, I just want a hobby, not a job. Amen to that. <laughs> Deb literally said amen. <laughs> if we're still teaching, I'd have like two plans. Oh, my God. Oh, before COVID, I had four plants for many years. Wow, Miss Lady June. Ooh, yes. Oh, not Micahs. Speaking of Micahs, Miss Lady June, look at this. Oh, you. I've had this Micah since 2019. In the same pot, essentially, that I got it in. And this is a macrame from Felix, actually. So I just bought one of these little plastic things from Home Depot, Lowe's. I love the Micahs. Micahs are so freaking beautiful. So beautiful. Felix says, I have two large potted vanilla bean orchids on wood poles. Very beautiful. Six foot tall. I bet. I used to have vanilla bean orchid. Uh, neglected. Again, this was all around the time where I just had so many plants. And a lot of them I started to, like, just fall off of. Vanilla bean. Oh. Is your vanilla bean orchid outdoors or indoors, Felix? CJ says, I'm very picky on what I collect now. I'm with you on that siege.
Um, CJ, you said, I'm trying to grow mine into a large form, but it takes so long to get them to that size. So what I've noticed, do you use a cedar planks? Because there are these random influencers on you on Instagram, and I always notice like they'll come on with like a micans, right, or any plant, literally any plant you could think of. They'll come with the salty pecan, okay, and the first salty pecan leaf, let's say, was like this at the bottom of like the cedar plank. And then the second salty pecan leaf was like probably like this large. And then the third salty pecan leaf was like this large, okay. So we went from like this to this. And then like, let's say like the fourth salty pecan leaf, you know, is like this large. And then the fifth salty pecan leaf and this is like on the cedar pole and like we're we're like up this much like we're about like a foot in now okay the, the the next one is like this large you know so i've noticed that when they use like the cedar planks right not the moss like moss poles i yes they're dope but i everyone i have seen use cedar planks their plants go grow just like insane. So look into that, Siege. Look into like cedar planks. And yeah. Because the only thing with like moss poles is eventually like the plant will outgrow it. Right? So... Unless, you know, you know what you're doing. You do, like, a stackable pole. But, yeah. That's just, like, one thing I noticed. Okay, your orchids are indoors. How's your lighting system? Like, do you use, like, do you have specific grow lights? Do you use um, those fancy ones? This thing is, like, really bothering me all. It's, like, really bothering me. But salty peeps, I'm I might head out in about like two minutes or so around like for the 45 minute mark. I think, you know, I don't want to be on here too too long. Catch up with my peoples. Expect again, like I said, next week I'm going to be starting my Halloween drink. So every Friday up until Halloween now, I'll be doing more of a dark halloween themed cocktail and i showed y'all already but i'll show y'all again i did get myself one of these oh little skull hands so i'm like mm, sippy sip <laughs> oh my god ah! Yo! <laughs> oh my god. Yo, it's the little things that I just find so entertaining that just bring me so much joy. I'm such a lame. Oh, see, you make your own moss planks. Ow. You know what? Why am I even offering CJ any plant advice when I literally said his collection is so buff like his plants goals 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 G-O-L-A-S goals <laughs> I 
I will see you all, my lovelies. If you haven't done so, please give this video a thumbs up for me, please, because it's free and, you know, it doesn't hurt if you chat in with me, okay? So I will see you all next Friday. I love you all. Let's get growing. And yeah, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining me every night for the God. I don't remember like how long have I have I how long have I been consistently live streaming? Hold on, wait, don't go yet, don't go yet, don't go yet. Wait, 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 wait. Please. I just want to see how long I've been live streaming. Consistently. Stop. Stop trying to flatter me, Siege. Psh, cut it out. Me? Stop the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me see. <clears throat> Oh, wow. So I started live streaming six months ago. And since then, I've been live streaming every single day since six months ago. So I'm really proud of myself. Uh, March 10th was my first live stream that I did. So now I love you all. And we're just going to keep consistent with this. I will see you all next Friday. And come ready for some spectacular Halloween stuff. Okay. I love you all. Thank you for just your forever support. Thank you for taking the time out of your life to come chit chat with me, to come chit chat with each other. We're all, as you can see, a little crazy fam. They're dope. I love them. I love you all. And I will see you on the next one. Let's get growing. Bye. Take care of your house plants. Make sure you transition them properly for the seasons because we are no longer in the summer. Tomorrow is essentially like summer solstice, spring Inca. Winter. Is it equinox or solstice? I never know which one it is. Is it summer solstice, spring equinox? Whatever. <laughs> I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Let's get going. If you aren't already, make sure you follow me on other social media accounts at Houseplant, H-E-U-Z-P-L-A-N-T. That's on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, here in YT. I love you all. Bye.